This will be problem number 90 from the 2012 AP Calc AB exam. It's a calculator question. Calculator is really not all that useful here. Most of the work is going to have to happen without the calculator. And what they say is that f is a function such that the integral from 6 to 12 of f of 2x with respect to x is equal to 10. Which of the following must be true? This problem is really sort of odd. Uh, if, if you look at these options, you know, the, the options that you're presented with, some of them have the same limits of integration. Uh, some of them have limits of integration that have been doubled. This one has limits of integration that have been cut in half. That can maybe clue you in on how you're supposed to pursue this. One tempting thing to do is to say, well, you know, if, if the integral of f of 2x is equal to 10, then aren't I just going to double that result and, and choose option D. And I'm guessing that was probably the most frequently chosen option for this problem. It's not the correct option. Here's why. I'm not simply doubling f of x here. I'm doubling what goes into f of x. If the two were out here and I could factor it out in front of the integral, it would be option D. But because the two is, is doubling the x and then that numerical value is going in place of all of the x's in f, and we don't know what f of x actually is, doubling x is very likely to do far more than just doubling the integral value. So option D is, is tempting. We'll talk about why it's not correct though. What I notice about this expression right here is I notice an inner function, right? I don't just have x inside this function, I have 2x. So anytime you're doing a definite integral by hand and you see an inner function, the option that you sh should hopefully consider right away is to try to carry out a u substitution. So if I try to let u equal that inner, inner function, u is going to be equal to 2x. I'm then going to try to figure out what the relationship between du and dx is. So I take the derivative of both sides of this. I get du dx is equal to 2. And so I'm kind of treating this algebraically here, which is a little shortcut, a little dangerous to do. Just kind of watch out if you do a lot more math with the sort of notation that I'm using here. Uh, but for the purpose of AP calculus and a multiple choice question like this should be totally okay. I solve this equation for dx. Multiply it across by the dx, divided by the two. du over two is gonna be able to be placed in for the dx. So what I did is I did my substitution. So I, I said f of u right, u is equal to 2x, so f of u, I substituted in place of the dx, what we figured out dx to be equal to, du over 2. Uh, so we don't have a doubling, we have a halving. So that might make you think, hey, it's going to be option C. Here's the thing that you have to be really, really careful about notationally on AP calculus exams. When you change the variable of integration from whatever the original variable is, which in this case is x, to a new variable, u, you need the limits of integration to go through the same transition. So these limits of integration that we start with are assumed to be values of x, because x is the variable within the differential in the given integral. When we change that differential from a dx to a du, these new values need to be values of u. They're really easy to get. All you need to do to figure out what u value corresponds to, I guess I can't see the original x values anymore, to figure out what u value corresponds to the x value of 12, I need to put 12 in place of this x, and the u value that corresponds to the x value of 12 is 2 times 12, or 24. Similarly, the u value that corresponds to the x value of 6 is going to be 2 times 6, or 12. So with a little bit further manipulation here, I can factor this 2 out in front of the integral, and so what I end up with is I end up with one half the integral from 12 to 24 f of u with respect to u. That's going to tell me that if I'm trying to solve this for an integral that goes from 12 to 24, I'm going to have to double what's on the other side of the given statement. So if you're wondering where I got this 10 from, that was from back here. Uh, so let's talk about this from start to finish one more time. We went through the substitution sequence. We figured out that this integral expression is equal to this integral expression. We simplified it a little bit. This integral expression is equal to the integral expression that we started with within the original equation. And therefore, when we double 
actually I have a little notational error here. Let me fix this up Sorry about that. You'll, you'll notice what I changed. I, I put it in red here. Uh, the integral that we developed is not equal to the integral that I had listed, which previously just had an X right here. It's equal to the integral that we started with back here. So that's definitely my fault. I didn't catch that before I started recording. I didn't want to go back and do the recording from scratch. So hopefully you're okay with me fixing that on the fly. So I can replace in this equation right here that was presented to us, I can replace this integral with the integral expression that we developed. And if I want to solve for the integral that's in this new equation, I would just multiply both sides by two. And that tells me that the integral from 12 to 24 of f of t with respect to t, f of u with respect to u, I could have very easily called this a t substitution. It's not real typical. You'll notice the options all contain t's. Uh, but hopefully you're okay with just seeing a different variable in these options than u. And so the option that we're going to go with has to have it, limits of integration of 12 and 24 and an answer of 20.